Hello, I interrupt my usual plants and gardening content video to bring you a story about how I almost got scammed. If we haven't met before, my name is June. I'm a plants and gardening content writer living in Lagos, Nigeria. I write about enlivening living spaces with tropical plants. My aim is to inspire a do-it-yourself gardening culture in my community. But then just the other day, I almost fell for some mischief. I'll tell you all about that in a minute, but first let me give you some background about myself. So I said I'm a writer. I write for my website, plantsintropicalspaces.com. In addition to that, I have this YouTube channel where I publish videos, um, plant care videos, and also gardening tour videos. And in addition to that, I also have an Instagram account where I connect with other plants lovers from all over the world. So these three platforms keep me really engaged in addition to the gardening and the photographing and the video editing, video making, video editing. I also built my website myself. I'm still building a website myself and that's kept me pretty engaged in the last three years since I quit my corporate job. Now back to the bullets I dodged. One Saturday, I got a message on Instagram chats from a company. I wouldn't mention the name of the company for illegal reasons. And um, they said they were op they wanted to collaborate with me. So by the way, I have on Instagram that I'm open to collaboration. So I said I was listening. So they sent me their introduction, stating their specialty in developing high quality, tailored gardening content. They proposed the collaboration where they would, we would offer joint workshops, um, gardening workshops, and they would ele elevate my brand in that way. They mentioned the monetization opportunity through sharing the revenue from the workshops. And they also mentioned that they would help me build a customized website and eBooks. Meanwhile, I checked out their own Instagram profile, which I always do if anyone asks to collaborate with me. And um, it wasn't impressive, not so many followers, not so many posts. And um, but then I said, well, let me just listen to this conversation. Um, I also checked out their website. It wasn't impressive either. And uh, well, I continued. I said, well, let's talk. We scheduled the meeting for um, Tuesday, which was three days from the time of speaking. Um, I confirmed Tuesday was fine. I proposed a time range for them to choose what time works and to communicate with me. And they said they would let me know by um, Monday. Okay. And then they asked which platform I was comfortable meeting with, either Google Meet or Zoom. I said I was comfortable with Google Meet. I mean, it was all the same to me. And they asked for my email address and my WhatsApp number which I gave to them. So um, end of day one, Instagram chat um, on Saturday. And then on Sunday, something interesting happened, which I took as a sign from God. I stumbled upon a YouTube video from an account that I don't even remember. I had never watched before. And so it was this lady who was talking about how her YouTube account was hacked and how she lost her YouTube account. She said she she was into gardening too. She was producing gardening content. And so she said she'd been talking with the potential um, sponsor or um, partner, I think, and that they'd got to the, an advanced stage in the discussion where they said they were going to send her a contract and they sent her a link to the contract to view. And when she clicked on that link, everything was gone. She said her YouTube went i mean i don't know how that happened but that was it and so she had to start all over again and she was so distraught because she built this youtube account over two years so i took that as a sign not to click on any link that they sent but my challenge was how to navigate that without appearing uncooperative with a potential partner right um well so on monday they sent me a message on instagram confirming the time for the meeting to be 10.30 on Tuesday. And they said that they would send me the link um, on WhatsApp and email 30 minutes before the meeting. 
so it's Tuesday now the meeting day and I'm still thinking about how I'm going to avoid clicking on this link but without appearing uncooperative and then I decided that I was going to call I was going to call and speak to whomever establish some um, contact with a human being in the first place and so but then by 10 minutes to 10 I got a message on WhatsApp. Now this was the first WhatsApp message. Other messages had been on Instagram. And um, so then I had a name for the first time and it was um, the WhatsApp number was actually the same number that I saw on their website. But then there was no profile picture, not even a company logo. And um, yeah, so I, there was the introduction again and I just said, um, I acknowledge the greeting, okay? But then what happened next puts me on heightened alert. He sent me another chat. He said, don't forget to get logged in by 10.30. Now, those were the exact words. Now, that sounded ominous. I don't know whether my brain was supercharged at that time, but then I was really, really suspicious and I was adamant I was not going to click on that link. So I called. It was now 15 minutes past 10. I called and there was no response. Okay. So I felt, okay, no problem. But then nine minutes later, the call back. And I couldn't hear anything. And maybe he couldn't hear me either. And that call lasted 17 seconds and it cut off. Then he sent another message on WhatsApp saying, WhatsApp seemed to be having some issues. Um, let's connect on Google Meet in two minutes. Now, it was almost the appointed time. So the two minutes indication was, I mean, I, I felt really suspicious and very uncomfortable about this. So I said, let's try WhatsApp again. And so he called again. And this time I could hear him. I established it was a male voice and um, he could hear me. And, um, but then we spoke for about 50 seconds and he cut off the call. And then he sent another message saying um, he was sorry, but that he couldn't hear me clearly. And I said, well, it was a pity because I could hear him clearly. So he asked that we connect over Google Meet again. He asked again that we connect over Google Meet. And but by this time, I just felt it was a minute to, it was 10.29, you know, so I just went straight into the meeting. I asked straight up, how long has your company been in operation? And he said eight months. So I asked um, who the other partners were. And then he mentioned partners in different countries, the usual um, United States, Canada, and um, India, Australia, I think. And then... I said, well, your website doesn't say much about you. So he said that, well, the website was just to establish an online presence. And I just didn't buy that because, I mean, really, if, um, as he says, one of their services is to help elevate um, businesses' brands, I mean, then the website wasn't doing much for their own brand. The website was just one page. It was, there were no samples of, work that they had done, the people that they had partnered with. There was not even an about us page. Now I'm not teaching scammers how to be more um, efficient with scamming, but then, I mean, these are things that um, we should look out for when we are approached by a company that wants to collaborate with us. Now I'm able to say this because in my previous role, one of my previous roles in one of my, the companies I worked for, I was evaluating proposals for partnerships with companies, right? And then I also managed corporate communication for four years in one of the companies. And I have a master's in corporate communication and I did my dissertation on social media. So I pretty much know what to look out for. So he continued to offer me their services, um, helping me write 15 eBooks, um, organize workshops, introduced me to horticulture experts from all over the world. Um, but I said I would keep it in view and I thanked him for the meeting. Now, why am I sharing this story? You never know who it might help. I mean, just the way I saw the other video and that helped me. Um, it made me more alert and I 
became suspicious by the minute and was able to watch out for this scam. So what are the red flags? What are the signs that I saw that made me um, really suspicious and not um, click on that link? Number one, the WhatsApp account had no profile picture or company logo. I mean, I'm not teaching scammers how to be more efficient with their work. But if you were approached by a company wanting to collaborate with you or, you know, partner with you, I mean, it's a partnership, right? You should be able to place a face to the name. There has to be some identity that you can hold on to for, and if you just don't feel comfortable, if you don't see a face, you don't see a company logo, then really I would say be careful. Number two, the story about the website just didn't add up. Now for a company offering certain services, I think that their website should be a place to exhibit the services. It may not necessarily be a portfolio of the work that they have done, but then the things that they say they will do for your website, you should be able to see that they have done for themselves. Otherwise, even if they were not scammers, then you would have a, um, some problem um, trying to get them to deliver on what they promised because perhaps you just don't have the competence to do it. Number three, a Gmail account. Now for a company of this caliber, they were using a Gmail account. There's nothing wrong with a Gmail account for a personal stuff, but for a business, this sort of business, website presence, I mean, you should have your own domain name, right? And your own domain email address. So that's something you should watch out for. If a company wanted to partner with you as well, I mean, I would be very careful about um, people who use Gmail accounts for this sort of business services. And because it would suggest to me that they were not serious really about their own, about their own image and the services that they um, say that they want to offer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Gmail addresses, but I mean, I would be not be comfortable with a Gmail address for this sort of business. Number four, the insistence on clicking on the link. I mean, he said that not once, not twice, click on the link. I felt pressure. Now, if you feel pressure, don't act. Just take a step back. If it's an opportunity, if it's yours, it will come to you. It will still be there. Number five, the fact that we moved from Instagram to WhatsApp to Google Meet. We could have had this call on Instagram or WhatsApp. So he could have sent me the link on Instagram as well. Um, but then there had to be a reason why he sent it on WhatsApp. Now, I know that Instagram is very particular about breaking their community guidelines and therefore he probably didn't want to risk being caught on Instagram because if, he, if I suspected anything, I could have reported and that was his Instagram account gone and he would have to start all over again. But then perhaps he could take that risk on WhatsApp, okay? And I would not be able to tie it or prove anything on Instagram. But then there was a reason why he sent that link on WhatsApp. So that brings me to the sixth point. Number six, the Google Meet link was fake. Now, so how did I know this? If you look at the link that he sent to me, it looks safe, right? But then compare that with this link that I generated and you can see the difference. The one I generated gives you the option to go to Meet and enter the code. The one he sent doesn't give that option. Now, had I got that option, I might have tried to use it. But then if I had tried, I would have noticed something fishy. Look at this. The third character after the slash in this code is not a letter in the English alphabet. It's a spurious link. Now, one way of avoiding getting scammed online is not to click on links. I mean, if you receive a message from your bank or a company that you otherwise trust asking you to click on a link, 
um, you might avoid that by going to the company website and looking for that information yourself. Just avoid clicking on that link or just type in the URL. And in the process of typing the URL, you probably notice that there was something fishy in, in, um, in that link. Well, that's it. That's how I avoided getting scammed. I hope I don't have to do another video like this. So if you did enjoy this video, if you found it useful, please share it with others. You never know who it might help. And please take out some time to watch my other plant and gardening videos and consider subscribing to my channel, Plants in Tropical Spaces, and then reading the articles on my website. Follow me on Instagram. And if you know where this was leading, please do drop us a comment in the comment section. I mean, we could all learn from this. So until the next video, thanks for watching and bye.